In this video, we're going to be creating an Expense Claims Manager. We'll be submitting and approving those claims, we'll see status reports, we'll be putting in access restrictions for the approval, and we'll be creating this whole application in under 2 minutes. So let's get started. First we'll create our application called Test App. We'll then add an application tab called Expense Claims. In that tab we'll add a workflow. For the first stage of the workflow, we'll be submitting our expense claim. And we'll be entering in a title, the amount of the claim, the department, the client it was for, the project, some notes, and finally a file attachment for a picture. Once it's been submitted, we'll then be sending it to the project manager under the PM role. The project manager will get a choice of either accepting the claim or rejecting the claim with a rejection reason specified. Once it's been accepted it will then be sent to the general manager under the GM role. The general manager will then get a choice of either accepting it or rejecting it using the same rejection reason field that we defined earlier. Once the general manager has accepted it, it will be sent to the accounting department with the accounts role. The accounting department will get a choice of either finally accepting it or finally rejecting it, also using the rejection reason field. And that marks the end of the workflow. OK, let's recap over the workflow we just created. We start out by submitting the expense claim. Once it's submitted, it gets sent to the project manager. The project manager can reject it with an explanation, or they can accept it, and then it gets sent to the general manager. The general manager can reject it, also with an explanation, or they can accept it, and it will get sent to accounting. Then accounting will put the final stamp of approval, or they can reject it, with an explanation or so. OK, let's publish the application to see what it actually looks like. A few seconds later, it comes up with this message and a link for you to click on to actually see the application. OK, so here's our application, our test application. We're presented with a list of expense claims. Um, of course, nothing is entered in the system at the moment. We're just going to run through um, as the administrator login to just show you the whole um, process um, from beginning to end without having to log in as different users, which we'll show you in a second. So you start out by clicking Submit, and here you can enter in um, your expense claim. The title in this case will be Books. I bought some books on end of year tax filing. You can also click uh, the attachment if you want to upload a picture, for example, of the receipt um, or um, maybe the uh, picture of the book that you bought or whatever. We're not going to in this case. So we click OK. And it tells you that your entry has been submitted successfully and the workflow has been started. Um, you can click the link to access the entry that you just submitted or you can just click it in the list down here. Now. Uh, now we see the buttons to accept, reject, um, but of course normally we wouldn't see this. It's only because we're logged in as admin, uh, which is the default login. That shows us all of the options and lets you run through the whole workflow to test it. Um, at the moment uh, we're going to click uh, accept just to accept this item. And that moves it onto the next stage, which is um, send to GM, as we see in the state here and we are able to accept it, reject it. And you'll also notice an extra button called Query. Um, this allows us to actually send a message to the previous, um, the previous participant in the workflow. Why did you need these books? For example, we can ask them a question. And that will then get emailed to them and allow the originator to respond. So as you can see now, we have a respond button. So the originator would then click this and say, I don't know very much about tax filings. 
and we click OK. So they then see that response at the bottom and uh, they can see that and then they can decide how they want to respond or they can ask more questions. Uh, in this case we're going to say uh, accept to accept it. It then goes to accounts so you see the state is now sent to accounts and accounts in this case is going to reject it. We already have lots of books on tax filing. And that then marks the end of the workflow. Um, there are no more buttons displayed here because the workflow is now closed. So the originator of the workflow will be notified um, that that is exactly what happened. And they'll see that in the list here where they see state reject. Okay. So now we're going to actually create a few users so that we can simulate the actual um, workflow as seen from an individual user's perspective. To do this we click on the users tab and we click one user, um, new user for the end user which we'll just call end user. We'll just put in a random email address for now. Okay, let's click on that user and set their password. Normally this would be done through email also. Okay, and for the other users we need to add an approver. Um, that's because they need a special type of user which uh, enables them to actually approve workflow instead of just creating workflow items. So we'll click new approver and we'll make this user ID PM manager project let's update their password go back here another one for the general manager one more for accounts. Now the important step here is to actually add the roles to each of the users so we can actually identify them and what they'll be doing in the workflow. So for accounts we need to add the role accounts For the general manager, we need to add the GM role. And for the project manager, we need to add the PM role. The end user needs to have a special role added called restrict, sorry, called my expense claims items only. What this does is it makes sure that they can only see their own expense claims and not other people's. That's quite important for end users, but for project managers, they need to be able to see other people's expense claims so that they can then approve them. Okay, and that's that for the users. We're now going to log in by clicking sign out up here, and we'll log in as the end user. Oops, log in as welcome. And you see now that the list is empty. The list is empty because we have that. Um, my expense claims only role added so we can only see our expense claims and we haven't added any yet so of course the list is going to be empty. Let's go ahead and submit an item from an end user. I needed a new laptop because my old laptop died recently. Again, we can add an attachment, but we're not going to this time. Okay. Now you'll notice when I click on my expense claim, there are no buttons over here because I'm logged in as the end user, so I shouldn't be able to see any of the approve uh, or reject items because I shouldn't be able to approve my own expense claims. So now we need to sign out and sign in instead as the project manager. Okay, so the project manager can see two items in here now because they don't have that restriction on 
so they can see everybody's expense claims, which is important because they may need to approve some of them. But what they can do is set the filter, which we have in this list here, to be PM, which means they will only see the workflow items that are relevant to that particular project manager. In this case, it's only showing items with the send to PM state, which is just one workflow item. They can bookmark this page so that this is what they always see when they log into the system. That way they will always see the items that they need to approve or reject. So let's click this item and decide whether we're going to approve or reject it. Okay, We're going to click PM accept to accept it. And now again the buttons have disappeared because there's nothing left for the project manager to do. And if we go back to the original list and we click on PM, we'll see that there's nothing in the list anymore because now it's in the hands of the general manager. So let's sign out and log in as a general manager. So the general manager can set his filter and bookmark this page and he'll see the item in here and again he gets the same list GM accept, GM reject or query. So we'll click GM accept and accept that. And now we need to log in as accounts. And again we see this here and we'll put the final accept. And the workflow is now complete for that particular item. Now let's go ahead now and enter in um, more data. I'm going to do this very quickly. Okay, so now we've entered in a few more items. I'm going to show you the status report. To do this, I go to reports and I click expense claims report. This lets you filter by workflow stages, um, but in this case you can just leave it blank and it will show you all of the workflow stages. And this shows you all of the workflow items <coughs> that are currently outstanding. Um, these are only the items that have not yet been completed. So all the ones that have been completed will go off this list. This is really a to-do list. It's a list of things that need to be um, checked by you know, different roles, which is grouped by. So everything that needs to be um, seen by the general manager is seen in this section. Everything by accounts here and everything by project manager here. <coughs> this particular report can be sent to you every day. Um, you can go to configuration, click on report subscriptions, click plus, and here you can specify which user wants to actually receive this expense claims report. And you can say whether you want it every day, every week, and so forth, the time of day that you want it. You can even specify a holiday schedule so that it doesn't come out on holidays. And once you click OK on that, it will then automatically send that email to you every day at 8 a.m. in the morning. So you can see exactly what you need to do for that day. OK, I think that just about wraps up what we want to show you in this demo. There's a lot more to show you here, um, a lot more features that are built in and that you get for free. Um, but I really just wanted to show you what you can create in just two minutes using Workflow First. Um, there's a whole lot that you can do with Workflow First. It's very simple to learn. Please download and try it out. Thank you.